Okay, it's the Penn State Blitz here on Penn Live. Starting to get serious. We've got a lot to get to in this edition. We're going to talk as August Camp gets ready for Penn State. Pressing questions for the Lions on offense. Then we're going to talk pressing questions for the Lions on defense. There's a Penn State media day coming up. James Franklin, his coaches, and his players meet the press. We're going to talk a little bit about what to expect from that. And then, as always, we're going to close with the always fascinating Penn State mailbag. Greg, I know you always look forward to the mailbag. It's one of your favorite five or six minute That's right. activities of the week. Go. Before I'm we get to that, too. though, it's been a long off season. Yeah. If you really think about it, all the stuff that Penn State's kind of had to deal with, there's been a lot of storylines, some positive, some negative, maybe more negative than positive. But finally, we're less than a week away from the start of August camp. Penn State's got a lot of questions after replacing guys like Trace McSorley, Miles Sanders, Sharif Miller, two starting offensive linemen in Ryan Bates and Connor McGovern. There's some new coaches on the staff, lost some people, challenging schedule. So let's start. Let's just start with the offense, pressing questions. We've kind of been writing about that on Penn Live each day. Hopefully, people have been reading it. I have my fingers crossed. But uh, what, what's overall, what, what are maybe one or two that really stand out to you for the offense? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we could just jump into the quarterback battle sure. right away. Sean Clifford, Will Levis, they'll fight it out. Obviously, I think most assume Sean Clifford will win that job, and mm -hmm. he has a lead going into camp. You know, as you mentioned on last week's Blitz, though, James Franklin's raving about Will Levis, mm -hmm. and I think this has all the makings of a Trace McSorley, Tommy Stevens battle back a few years ago when we all kind of assumed that, it was Trace McSorley's job, but it ultimately was his, but James Franklin was adamant that Tommy Stevens was right on his heels. I think we'll hear a lot of the same things uh, this time around. And then, of course, the offensive line. Mm -hmm. They have to replace two starters. Connor McGovern is now a Dallas Cowboy. Ryan Bates is with the Eagles. The hope seems to be that C.J. Thorpe and Mike Miranda are ready to play guard and that Rasheed Walker is capable right. of playing tackle in the Big Ten. Bob, we don't really know it until we see it on the field. Yeah, to me, a really uh, an underrated question is, I'm very curious to see who will emerge for Penn State as their third receiver, mm -hmm. uh, primary receiver. They're going to spread the field. Uh, K.J. Hamler, uh, Jahan Dotson look like locks to start. Right. Um, but they need a third receiver. There's certainly some talent in that room. A five-star like Justin Shorter uh, could be set for a big year. And to kind of go hand-in-hand -hand with that, you know, it's very clear that James Franklin was not happy last year mm -hmm. with the way the position was coached. Right. He, he, he pulled the trigger on a coaching change, I think, not even 24 hours it wasn't long, after Bob. the Citrus Bowl. Yeah. And David Corley was sent packing after a year. Uh, Jared Parker brought in. Uh, early indications are that James is happy with the way that he's been working with the wideouts. Mm -hmm. I remember he used the phrase aggressive in his coaching style. But they need to play a lot better uh, this year, and they need to be coached a lot better because they were just too reliant on Trace McSorley and Miles Sanders to get the offense going. They can't be that one-dimensional this year. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the development of the receivers and how the new coach coaches them is a really big storyline, and I think they really need to get some of these young receivers going. Um, so let's turn our attention, Greg, to the defensive side. A lot yeah. is expected from the def defense this year. Uh, they got a lot of speed. They got a lot of talented young players. They got some guys coming off red shirt years that could really help them. And there's 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 kind of a perception that this could be, if not the best defense in the Big Ten, one of them, and one of the best defenses mm -hmm. in the country. How do you look at it, and what are the questions that need to be answered? Yeah, I think the question I have for you, Bob, is it came in the form of a mailbag question a couple weeks ago uh, in a story on Penn Live, and it was a question about what position do we think that maybe – Either we or fans are overconfident in going into the season. And the question, it popped into my mind immediately with the defensive line. Yeah. We know Ito Grossmanis is a stud. He's getting first round NFL draft grades. Robert Windsor um, has been raved about by Gil Brandt, which is a stamp of approval, I think, yeah. that, that any NFL or college player would take. Um, do, we, do we really know truly what to expect out of the rest of these guys, though, other than their, the potential looks right. fantastic? But is there an overconfidence about that group in your mind going into the 2019 season? I don't know if overconfidence is the word, but there, there is, they still, there's a lot of players on the, in that unit that still have to prove it. Right. I mean, other than Etor and Windsor, 
they're counting on guys that look great in the weight room, mm-hmm. and look, like they test really well, uh, or they've shown flashes like Shaka Tony with right. the four-sack game. Jason Alway. At yep. Indiana last year. But, you know, the rest of the year, where was he? I mean, it's just we know he can play, but he has not consistently done mm-hmm. it. They're going to need him this year. A, a, a couple of guys I think that are going to be really key for them on the defensive line are Antonio Shelton and mm-hmm. P.J. Mustafer. Yep. Because they need some guys to kind of emerge at the three technique position uh, where they're replacing Kevin Givens. That's, I think that's a, a pretty underrated loss is Kevin Givens. I think you're right about the defensive line. Um, the obvious question for me is what will Penn State do at the safety position opposite Garrett Taylor? If you really, we, we talked uh, a couple of minutes ago about how weird this offseason has been. You know, in I think January or February, we, we just assumed Lamont Wade was even going to be part of the team. He entered right. the transfer portal, mm-hmm. and he decided to come back. I mean, yeah. that almost never happens. Right. Obviously, he had a strong spring. He was running with the ones. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some other players in the defense, I think, that they like at the safety position. Jonathan Sutherland would be one. <clears throat> the Juco, Ju- Jaquan Brisker, might yep. have a say in things. But safety is important. Um, you know, Penn State's going to play a lot of 4 2 5 sets. And in some of the five, in the five defensive back sets, Instead of a third quarter, it might be a third safety. You just right. don't know what they're going to do. they got to replace Nick Scott. I think that's a pretty big position battle. I think the right guard battle between mm-hmm. Miranda and Thorpe is one, and, and the safety battle, who emerges, is another big one in camp. Yeah, no doubt. And, the, and you look at that safety battle, I just it felt like Lamont Wade was the surefire winner of that, and I just don't know anymore. It's a great toss-up, and maybe the biggest toss-up. I mean, the other spots, you know, offensive guards, some of these other yeah. positions, you you don't maybe know who's going to definitely win, but you, have, you at least know that there's two guys and one of them's going to win out. That, that you, I could think they could play all three early on, the wait and see. Yeah, and I think that's, that's reflecting on maybe how they've recruited, where the last couple of years they've really played their starters a lot on mm-hmm. defense, and they've been, a lot of the corner they've been reluctant to sub out. Now maybe they feel better about some of the reserves that they yeah. have, and you'll see them, which is something they do at Ohio State and Michigan, I think, more than they do. Uh, at Penn State. So we, we touched upon it. Uh, Penn State Media Day is, is Saturday. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Very. I'm excited. I know you're excited. We get to meet with Franklin uh, mm-hmm. and also the players and also his coordinators. Is there, are, there, are there a couple key players you're going you're gonna to be curious to hear from? Uh, what about, how do you think the coordinators are going to be you know, approached? I think Brent Pry is going to be asked a lot about the defense. I think, I think uh, Ricky Ronnie it's going to be asked a lot about what the offense might look right. like differently mm-hmm. with, with Trace no longer, you know, showing up as a runner and a thrower. Uh, what kind of stands out to you there? Yeah, a couple of things. Number one, obviously, with Ronnie, I think the biggest questions are going to be what is he done differently approach-wise, just himself this offseason, maybe compared to last year that might change the way he calls games in 2019. Obviously, there are some plays that stand out, both good and bad, uh, from his first year. But there are some things that have not addressed uh, could really hamstring again uh, Penn State again this year, just like last year. So that'll be interesting. You know, I'll be curious to hear if uh, Pry can sort of give some uh, numbers or uh, analysis to back up James Franklin's claim about how fast this defense can be. I'm curious to think uh. to know what his opinion is of them being ranked as maybe a top five or a top two defense even in the country going into the season. Does he think they're? Because he'll be honest about it if he doesn't think they're quite there yet, or if they have things to improve on, he'll be very blunt about it and very uh, um, analytical about what they have to do. So I'll be curious to hear that. And then, you know, um, just players on the quarterback battle, I think, is interesting. And and where those guys are and how it impacts a team going into camp when you don't necessarily have one guy that is your singular voice until he's named a starting quarterback. And, of course, James Franklin's going to be asked to define when he'll do that. I guarantee he'll say just like he did in Chicago, Mm -hmm. Bob. When the guy is obvious to everyone within the program, a decision will be made. Yeah, and I think another guy that might uh, field a couple questions will be Matt Limegrover. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rasheed Walker's development is a big part of, of kind of what they're doing. I think also maybe what, what he wants to do uh, with Will Fries and maybe if he thinks he can get maybe a, another level out of him right. at the top spot is, is, uh, is going to be important. And, yeah, I, I do think that Thorpe and Miranda are both going to play, but I wonder about maybe some of the guys – Behind them, I have. I was going to say one more thing about Penn State Media Day, but I have a funny feeling you're going to ask me about it in the Penn State mailbag. So I'm going to I'm going to pull back. Okay. And see if I was right. Let's get to the Penn State mailbag. I don't think you are going to be right, Bob. Darn it. So we'll have to. And I'll ask you about it. We'll have to double back to that. All right. First things first. Obviously, um, 
you know, when you look at this team, the win totals eight and a half. You can see for people nine and three, maybe ten and two. What's the floor for this team, in your opinion? What is the Ooh. minimum number of wins this team could end up with this fall? Minimum, with that schedule and the, the teams they got to face in the Big Ten, the Big Ten West, I would say seven. Yeah, I think I think if things go, if they lose a lot of close games again, and they, they do not solve the riddle of the Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, right. they're three and twelve against them. Uh, since Franklin's been here, if, they, if, it, if it goes all wrong, I think they could be a seven and five team. I think they have the depth to overcome injuries at just about any position, including mm-hmm. quarterback. But I do think the schedule is a little bit more challenging than people realize. I think that's the floor. Okay. Uh, second question: the toughest stretch on Penn State's schedule is it undoubtedly that Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State run, or does something else catch your eye? Maybe in November. No, I think that's going to be tough. Those are all just physical, physical teams. Michigan State's had their number. Iowa, it's got to be gunning for Penn State right. after really having a, just a great chance to win the last two years. The game's at Iowa, tough place to play. I do think that will that will definitely be a challenge. Um, obviously, the Ohio State game is going to be a challenge, but they're going to have their hands full. When they go to Minnesota, mm-hmm. I don't know that Purdue's going to be that easy even at home. I'm not sure what to think of Pitt. Right. Early in the year. And I don't know how good Maryland's going to be when they open. I think they open the Big play. Ten season yep. on a Friday night there. I just don't know if they're, they can. They're usually a little bit better at home than they are on the road. But then Penn State beat them by 63 right. two years ago. So I don't know. My Penn State mailbag question, or the question that interests me the most is, it, it's just as of you know the start of camp, who are the true freshmen? that you like the most and that are most likely to get the green light, which means yeah. they're going to be prepping to play and not just a couple games then redshirt. Yeah, it doesn't sound like Keaton Ellis. They're going to be able to keep him off the field, the corner from State High. Uh, I think Brandon Smith is going to play, if, at minimum, the same role Jesse Lucetta did, where he plays yeah. 13 games, mostly on special teams, with maybe some mop-up duty at the mm-hmm. end, depending on who they're playing. Uh, Noah Kane and Devin Ford. It's going to be fascinating to me to see if they play both of those guys or if they redshirt one of them. I think that you could make the case either way, and you might just have to see how they do in camp. So that'll be interesting to watch. And then, you know, you look across the rest of the roster, I don't know if I see somebody at wide receiver cracking into that. I don't know if you count Jaquan Brisker in that category, but as a first year, if you're talking mm-hmm. first year players, yeah. certainly him. Um, and there could, there's going to be a lot of guys that play in four games this year, but in terms of the guys that play over four, I think that's probably about it. Yeah, I could see a four running backs playing this year, especially if Devin Ford does what Miles Sanders did mm-hmm. in his true freshman season in August in 2016, and obviously what Barkley did in August of 2015. If, he, if the talent is that obvious, mm-hmm. team is going to play right. him. I think they're already prepping to play Noah Kane. <clears throat> I agree with your list. The one other guy I think has, has a chance to do something He's gained a little bit of late weight is the other linebacker, Lance Dixon, yeah. especially on special teams. Um, he looks like he's gotten a little bit bigger. I know they really like him. I think he could end up being maybe that hybrid linebacker safety guy if mm-hmm. he doesn't put on uh, much more weight. But I'm, I'm with you on Brandon Smith as well, and I think Keaton Ellis is a guy that is going to be and end up being one of the steals of the class, yeah. I think, if he stays healthy. Yeah, I wouldn't rule out, in kind of that similar vein to Lance Dixon, probably wouldn't rule out Marquise Wilson being in the conversation at the very least, especially if injuries would pop up. Yeah, and let's be honest, he's recruiting a lot better, but if this team is as, is as deep as he thinks it is, mm-hmm. maybe there isn't really the pressure to play as many guys right. and get them ready, but unless they get a rash of injuries, and hopefully that won't happen. It could only be a dozen. I remember in years past it's been a little bit more than that, but he's recruited so well that I think that the guys that do play are going to be really, really good. Agreed. All right, that's it for this edition of the Penn State Blitz here on Penn Live. When we return next week, we're going to have actual practices, news, quotes, information, and we won't be talking about the transfer portal anymore. I know everyone's thankful for that.